The thumbnail that you saw, as well as this picture, which is the same picture, is only there to present to you in this Sunday School lesson for today's class as a contrast as what happened 27 years ago as opposed to what happened just a year ago. We are only going to try to show this information here in contrast again. But before we get started in this Sunday School lesson for today's class, let us recite the Lord's Prayer that he prayed for you and I before he died. And that's what we hope for this whole presentation is to do, is to give the viewer, you, and also especially you, an understanding of what we are facing in the world today. We call it a global warning, but the world is changing and we're not gonna get into the previous lessons we've had on that. But these Sunday school lessons are taken directly, as you're gonna see in this lesson here, directly from the Bible. There's nothing in the lesson that's being presented or no opinions, it's just information from the Bible. Now look, let us look at this prayer that Jesus Christ prayed, the Lord's Prayer in the book of John, chapter 17, verse one through verse 26. So these words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, I was come to glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you, as you have given him power over all first, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, of whom we have sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work for which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I've manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them of which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all mine are thine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept, and none of them are lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come out to you in these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy, which may be filled within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world and sanctify them through your truth and your word is true. If you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which you believe on me through their word that they <clears throat> may all be one as you father are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us and that the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one <clears throat> I in them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and to have loved them as you have loved me Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you did send me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love who are within it may be in them, and I in them. That's the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed. Now, I put two URLs in the prayer, and I hope for you to go back and learn the prayer and make sure you visit the URLs. Now, this is a Sunday school lesson for today's class, and we're taking this lesson from, and we're talking about the Abraham family. That's what we're talking about. We're going to get into that in a few minutes, but this Sunday school lesson here is just to give you the background of what this lesson is all about. Now, you see in Captain Red, it said, don't let them read the Bible, the Holy Bible, God's Word, or to exercise their right to vote. That's what we're faced in the world today, and this lesson is giving a background of the whole matter and where it started and when it started and why it started. We're using the Abraham family, and we're also using, we talk about all eight seed of Abraham. Abraham had eight sons, Ishmael being the first one, Isaac being the second one, and he had six additional sons, of which we're going to get into this lesson in try to explain the whole process. Now, understanding God's word is to try to understand the word, the wind. We often don't really understand God's word 
because we look at it as if though it's a lifespan of what we're doing but the god's word is like the wind it blows different ways the wind does and the word of god is also understood in the matter of understanding the the course of the wind <laughs> it's like a double-edged sword and what i'm saying is that you read it forward backwards and all different directions in order to get it this lesson here is taken from actually starting in the book of genesis but the lesson actually goes through the entire bible because all the information in the entire bible is there we're talking about this young girl rebecca here and the reason why we highlighted rebecca in black is to show you that this lesson is starting out with rebecca and how she got involved in this whole process she was a very young girl and we're going to take this now Try to slow it down, but that is the background of what this lesson is really all about. This is a Sunday school lesson for today's class, regardless of what day you see it, regardless of what day you you really watch it. It doesn't really matter. It's a Sunday school lesson, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a Sunday school lesson, and we hope for you to share it. And that's probably what show the thumbnail to show that the bottom of the thumbnail was what Jesus Christ has commanded us to do when we find out something about the Lord. We are commanded by Jesus Christ is to share that information with as many people as possible. And by doing so, you are actually saving your soul and also the soul of the person that may not know what it's really all about. So it's a give and take. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Now I'm going with this lesson. Now we're going to move on. We're keep taking up too much time. It is a quite a long lesson. But in Genesis chapter 22, 23, you're talking about Behu. We got Rachel and these eight. Malachi's did bear the Noah, Abraham's brother. Now let's stop, put a pin here. Abraham is like a, he's a triplet. He had two other brothers and you can see the name of his brothers here in this lesson, but it, he had two brothers. One of his brothers had no children, but Abraham and his brother had children. His brother had a daughter and a son. Lot was the son and Rebecca was the daughter. And then we're going to move on down through this lessons and we'll see why Sarah, Abraham's uh, wife, got in, uh, involved in this matter also. But we're talking about Abraham and his brothers in the first part of this, starting in the book of Genesis chapter 22. But you really want to go and look at the gist of the lessons is in chapter 24. In 20, chapter 24 has 67 verses. And we hope for you to exercise the understanding of all the information, all six to seven verses to get an understanding of what it's talking about looking down at six to, uh, genesis 6 to 24 6 to 7 it said and isaac brought her into his mother's sarah's tent and took rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's death now we see how we skipped all the way down that way. We got to go back up to the top. Now it's just like a, the wind blow. You know what way it's going to go. God's words is front like a double edged sword. So we go back up to the top now and then look at Rebecca, because Rebecca re introduced in verse, I mean chapter Genesis chapter uh, verse uh, chapter 22 verse 23, but still down in verse 24. Now we understand how Rebecca got involved in the whole process. She was a young girl went into her Isaac's mother's house and he took her understanding the word took for those who will have the understanding and now this young girl been been taken by a 40 year old man and now this 40 year old man has a wife just like it is in the world today we just left the country of Afghanistan and we know what takes place in the country of Afghanistan in the place of the United States of America and all over the other parts of the world where young girls are then raped or taken by older men that's what we're talking about what took place yesterday today and tomorrow which is all the same but now we're going to get involved in this whole lesson now let's go through this as we can and see what rebecca is talking about and rebecca after having all this involvement with isaac we can see but for 25 28 and Isaac was 40 years old when he took rebecca see that word took rebecca to his wife to wife the daughter of the given her father's name which is a syrian in the land and his sister and his all this information and isaac entreated the lord now i looked in the dictionary to try to find this word entreat entreated i couldn't find the definition for entreated but isaac entreated the lord which means he may confront it with the lord depending on what the word entreat mean if you know i wish i knew for his wife rebecca 
she was barren, a young girl, but she couldn't, she didn't have any children. Either she didn't have any children or he could not make any children. The, the Bible doesn't say. This is just an assumption. So saying is that Isaac entreated the Lord because she, Rebecca Baring, had the Lord was entreated by Isaac him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Now, after Isaac entreated the Lord, now the Lord being entreated by Isaac, now Rebecca has a child. Now, now the background is getting a little clear, I hope, to understand why we started out with Rebecca talking about the seed of Abraham because Isaac was Abraham's seed. Now, Isaac, Abraham's oldest son, we're going to get involved in that in just a minute, but Abraham's oldest son, Ishmael, who was an Egyptian because Abraham's wife, Sarah, had a maid, handmaid, she called it, which was an Egyptian woman, but Sarah could not have children, so she convinced, accordingly to what the Bible is saying, Abraham to go into Hagar, her handmaid, and he had a child named Ishmael by Hagar, but then Sarah got jealous and asked him to send Hagar and Ishmael away. And he did. And if you study the lesson, you'll see that God confronted with, or had an angel to confront with Hagar to tell Hagar that he was going to bless Ishmael. And God does not make a promise that he doesn't keep. The picture that I showed you in the beginning, the thumbnail, in the beginning of the Million Man March, that march was orchestrated by one of Ishmael's descendants. But the primary purpose of showing that is to show you that a million men, all kind of races of men got together in the United States Capitol and there wasn't a police officer involved in that million man march. That's the contrast of what we're going to be showing you in a few minutes. Going on with this lesson now, showing how Rebecca got involved in this and now Rebecca has a child and the child that Rebecca had is what we're talking about, not just one child. Rebecca had two children. Look at what we have in green. The Lord talking to Rebecca as she got pregnant. And, uh, verse 23, 25 verse 23 said, And the Lord said unto her, talking about Rebecca, Two nations are, with, are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from your bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all, all over <laughs> like a hairy garment, and they called him his name Esau. And after that, his came out his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was sixty or three score years old when she bore them. And the boys grew, and Esau was cunning, hunter, a hunter, and a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling, um, a plain man dwelling in the tent. Now stop. All we're saying is, is that now we're getting into the story of why we put the red writing ups and don't let them read the Holy Bible, God's word, or to exercise their right to vote. The story started with this process of the red writing that you see, the statements made, it's, it actually started at this time. The background that we're talking about and where we are today is giving you the background of what took place. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on this because we've got a long ways to go and a whole lot of things to show. But now this is like a pictorial Sunday school lesson. There's a lot of pictures. And as you can see, we started, we started out with a picture. And there'll be other pictures even presented. Like I said earlier, this is a pictorial type of a Sunday school lesson. But I do pray for you to stop this slide and understand what's being said and to take your Bible because I'm taking this data here from the King James Version of the Bible but let's use your Bible version of the Bible if you choose to do so and get an understanding because you see we started out in Genesis chapter 22 verse 23 but we 
the second verse was 2415 because all we're doing in each one of these verses is to show what took place with Rebecca. That's what the process is starting out to show what took place with Isaac and Rebecca and how Rebecca got to be so v much involved in this. Well, let's look down, if you would, please, at verse 2461. And they called her Rebecca and said unto her, We will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. They blessed Rebecca and said unto her, You are our sister. Be you the mother of thousands of millions. You see what we're talking about? That's who Rebecca is. Rebecca is the mother of thousands and millions because she was the wife of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of twin, which was Jacob and Esau. And Jacob had 12 sons, and Esau had five sons. And Jacob's and Esau's people are in the world today. They are in the world today, and both the problem that was created with God giving Rebekah the order that he gave her is created a problem because the Esau people and Jacob's people are here in the world today and Esau's people don't let them read, they said, talking about Jacob's people, God's Bible, don't let them read God's word or exercise their right to vote. That's what's happening, exercising their right to vote today. But prior to the picture that I showed you why the Million Man March was there, was to show you that there were no rights of for Jacob's people because Esau's people has a problem. Let's look down now at verse 27. And the boys, now we're talking about uh, 25, 27. And the, boy, and the boys grew, and Esau was cunning in the hunter and a man of the field, and Jacob was plain the man and dwelling in the tent. Isaac loved Esau because he did eat the venison but Rebecca loved Jacob. Now that split there between the mother and the father, one loving other brother, loving what Rebecca taking God for what he told her was gonna happen with the twin in, that she was gonna have in her womb, that she then conceived with Jacob to steal Esau's blessing that was given by Isaac. And once he she and Jacob stole Esau's blessing, now Esau has a problem. He always want now to get even <laughs> with Jacob for taking his blessing. Now, let me put a pen here and show, you, and show you why God said vengeance is mine. Esau's vengeance is still boiling, if you can hear what I'm saying. Don't let them read the Holy Bible, God's word, or exercise their right to vote. The, the vengeance is still boiling, if you can hear what I'm saying. I pray that you can, because... Vengeance belonged to the Lord. The blessing that Jacob and Rebekah stole was not God's blessing. The blessing that they stole was Isaac's blessing. And Isaac could not bless Esau as well as God can bless him. But God knew the heart. He knew that Esau's heart was going to be like it was before he was born because God said, There are two nations in your womb, looking back up at 23. Two manner of people shall be separated from your bow, and one people shall be stronger than the other people. See, he knew that Jacob's people would be stronger than Esau's people, so strong that Esau, after capturing the Judites, then Edomites, captured the Judites, and the Edomites brought the Judites away captive, carried them away captive into a place where they would not let them read the Bible nor let them vote. And the ones that they carried away were stronger than the one that carried them away. And the ones that they carried away, the Judites, they build a nation, a continent, that the Edomites weren't strong enough to build. That's what God is talking about. That's what this lesson is all about, is to show you this is a Sunday school lesson. But the information in this Sunday school lesson is being taken directly from the Bible and getting an understanding. God said, above all we're getting, get an understanding, is to get to understand what Rebecca 
was done. Rebecca, because uh, she, what she did, look down, uh, keep on reading down at uh, verse in verse 23, again, 27. And well, no, 20, going down, going down. And, and see what Rebecca is actually doing. Rebecca was very strong. Let's go back up and look at what her family told her, that you will be the mother of thousands of millions. That's what we're talking about, thousands of millions. So understanding now that Jacob's name was changed by God from Jacob to Israel. The other six sons of Abraham are not mentioned in this part of the lesson, but we're going to talk about Jacob's other six sons. One of Jacob's, one of Abraham's offsprings, we know him by the name of Job. He came from Uz, Uz, the land of Uz. That's in the book of Job, first chapter. You'll see that God describing who Job is and where he came from, a man from the land of Uz. Well, Uz is in, also in part of this lesson here. We go now, we know how how the Abraham family is up on the earth. Abraham's seed, and we're going to get into that in just a minute to show you how it is. I'm going to move on to show you Abraham's seed. <laughs> this is Abraham's seed. Abraham's first son, Ishmael, had 12 sons. Abraham's son, uh, Abraham's grandson, Jacob, had 12 sons. Abraham's grandson, Esau, had five sons. But Abraham himself, after several died in 120 years, Abraham had, because he was uh, circumcised at age 85, he had additional six sons after Sarah died. Her mother, their mother was named Keturah. Well, Keturah had a son. You'll see that here in this lesson here. Look up at uh, Genesis 11, 26. And you see how, how God's word is like to win? We started back in Genesis uh, 20, uh, 28, and then we went to uh, 23, and then we went to Genesis 28. You see, it's like a double-edged sword. To get an understanding, you got to get you get it all. But see, a verse Genesis 11, 26 is giving you now that Abraham's father, that he was 70 years old when Abraham and his two brothers were begot. Well, that's why I'm concluding that Abraham and his three brothers, who they didn't mention the mother in this case, nor in the book of uh, Chronicles that they mentioned his mother, but he had, they were triplets. Now, well, then we'll go on with this understanding now to get the understanding that God has given us in the book of Genesis about Abraham and his brothers and his brother's children and Abraham now hooking up with Lot and what God did before he changed Abraham's name. You know, God changed names. He changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham and he changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel. That's what we talked about in this lesson. But the picture that you see on the left side is giving you all of the names of the descendants of Abraham's seed with the exception of what you see in the dark green, but they are there because the medium there in this part of this lesson, you see that Abraham's people you see in the dark green married into Jacob's people that you see down up on the Jacob, Jacob's fourth son, Judah. That's where we are today is the Edomites and the Judites enslaved the Edomites, which was Esau's people. Esau was the father of Edom or the Edomites and Jacob was the father of the Judites. And the Judites enslaved the Edomites, two brothers' children, and one enslaved the other one. And then the Edomites enslaved the Judites and carried the Judites away to a place and wouldn't let them read the Bible nor let them vote. Where we are today, we're moving on in this lesson. Stop this lesson and study the lesson so you can get an understanding of what we're talking about because from Genesis 11:26 is about the Abraham before he begot Isaac, before he begot Ishmael, before he begot all the other six sons. We're giving now the background of Abraham himself. And then we're going to go from here because it's like God's word is doing this, is to give now an understanding of Jacob and Esau because that's just what's predicated upon Jacob and Esau, not as much upon the other six sons or the older son, Ishmael. But Ishmael is a part of the whole process of the very first thing that you saw.
because it was one of Ishmael's people that started the, the million men march that you saw. It was also one of Ishmael's people that took over the cause what God had already told Abram that his people would be enslaved for 400 years and it was the Edomites, the Ishmaelites, Ishmael's people that saved jo uh, Joseph who was put into the pit by his brothers and they sold him to the Ishmaelites and the Ishmaelites then carried Joseph into Egypt and then Joseph got his brothers to come into Egypt and they were there for 400 years just like God had already told Abram that was going to happen. Abram, when God told Abram that the people would be carried into captivity, Jacob had not had any children at that time. It was God talking to Abram before he changed Abram's name. 12, 7 said, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto, unto your seed, Will I give this land, and there, there build he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Now the name of the altar that he built was built was called Bethel. Okay, that's Abraham. Abram built a. Uh, I mean, no, I'm sorry. Built an altar unto the Lord. Now look at twelve nine, and Abram joined in toward the south, and now it's giving you the understanding of the movements of of. Uh, Abram before God changed his name 12 14 said and it came to pass that Abram was coming to Egypt the Egyptians and beheld a woman was there for fair so we know now that Abram married and had his wife Sarah and it went into Egypt and he didn't tell the people in Egypt that his wife was a very beautiful woman that she was his wife and they are now chastising Abram because he didn't tell them that the woman that's with him was his wife. So you see that what I'm suggesting is that the same thing that happened to Isaac took Rebecca. Well, now these Egyptians wanted to take Sarah, Abraham's wife, who Abraham neglected to tell that that was his wife. Now here's a picture. I'm showing this picture and I told you it's a pictorial blessing. Jacob and Esau serve, God told Rebecca that the elder shall serve the younger. And because of that, these things that you see in this picture happen again. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in your womb, two manner of people shall be separated from your bow, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, that you see here. The Edomites brought the Judites from their home and brought them into captivity in another place. Moving on, Genesis 12, 18 is talking about Pharaoh and what took place with Pharaoh and Abram before God changed his name. Looking down at Genesis 13, 14, and the Lord said unto Abram after that lot was separated from him, left him. Now uh, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Now this is what God is now giving to Abraham, if you understand what I'm saying. God is now given to Abraham. Now look down at Genesis 14, 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed him with, uh, he armed his trained servants, born in his house, 318 and pursued. So you see, Abraham or Abram was also a warrior. We know in Genesis 14, we're going to see in a minute that Abram, when, before his name was changed to Abraham, he paid tithes to Melchizedek after slaughtering the kings that he went to slaughter. And this is what we get in show now. 22. And Abram said unto the king yourself, and Abram and said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord and the most high God, Lord. And possessor of the heavens and earth. That's that's Genesis 14, 22, 14, 23. That I will not take from a thread even to the uh, shoes latch. And that I will take anything that is yours. Unless you should say, I have made you uh, rich. Now this made Abraham rich. Now this is Abraham plus Abraham was very rich. 
I want to, that's what I was trying to get to, to show you that before God changed his name, Ab Abram to Abraham, that he was very rich. That's what we're trying to show you in this part of this lesson here. But down further, you'll see down in uh, Genesis 14, 15, 13. And he said unto Abram, I know of the surety that your seed shall be strengthened, shall be a strengthen in a land that is not theirs. See, God now is telling Abram about the children of Jacob, of Israel, because it, it, he's going to change Israel's name, but he didn't tell, he didn't call his name here, but he's telling him that in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall, um, uh, and, they, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So now God has already told Abram that the children of Israel who are going to go into slavery in Egypt, would be there for 400 years. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, the Edomites, knowing this, Edomites brought the Judites captive into a place, and they now still are trying to hold slavery over those people. And it's been over 400 years. I just want you to watch this lesson and understand what is being said in this lesson. And this lesson is all you got to do is stop and read it in your Bible or another Bible. Doesn't really matter. All of this information that we're giving are coming directly from the Bible. All the pictures that were given is what's happening in the Bible. Looking down in, um, at uh, Genesis 15, 18 said in the same day, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. He made an agreement with Abraham, saying unto him, your seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the river of the great river of river of Euphrates. So what God has done now, he's made a covenant and given Abram land that covered quite a bit of land. You see, so the land that the Israelites got was land that God had already given to Abram uh, or Abraham, his grandfather. The grandfather got the land in a promise right here in Genesis 15, 18, as it is today. And the, uh, the argument is still over the same land. But not only did God give Abraham's grandson land, the Israelites, he also gave land to Lot and his people because Lot was in Sodom. And we're going to see that in another story, part of the Sunday school lesson. But Nevertheless, God did give Abraham all this land in Genesis 15, 18. He gave him the land from the river Egypt, which name was changed to the river, great river Euphrates. Or Euphrates. But the, the Egypt river has was changed. The Egypt river was one of those rivers that ran out of the Garden of Eden that had all the gold. <laughs> but the Egypt, the river of Egypt, name was changed. What the river Euphrates name has not ever been changed. Then Leah 16, 1 said, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Remember we said back up earlier, we we're talking about, hey, now Sarah has decided herself that she had to do God's work and, and now give Abraham a child. And now Abraham has the child by Hagar at the uh, direction of Sarah, his wife. Now, Sarah, his wife, didn't uh, want that because look at 16 2 and Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray you, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain a child by her. So now she's saying, She's this property. <laughs> my maid is going to have a child by me and it's going to be my child. That's what that's basically what she is saying in this lesson. So the understanding that she didn't have God's blessing to do that. It's just like <laughs> Eve didn't have God's blessing to what she did. But the, the, the wives, the wives always, for some reason, after Eve did what she did, it's, anyway, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Sarah then had Hagar to have the child. And she had the child and the child grew and his name was Ishmael, as you saw earlier. That was Abraham's oldest child. 
But Abraham, you see here in Genesis 16, 16, and Abraham was uh, 80 years old, 86 years old, when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. His name was Abram. His name was not Abraham at that time. God had not changed his name. He was six. He was 86 years old when Ishmael was born, and he was, and look at 17, 1 said, and Abram was 90 years old, 99, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, I am the Lord Almighty, walk before me and be you perfect. Now, we know now that at, he, was, he was 86 years old when Ishmael was born, but he's now 95 years old when God has appeared to him now. You see, for the difference between 86 and 99 is how old Ishmael was before Sarah had given even having Isaac because after God met with Abraham you see in seven in the Quranic Quran, Abraham uh, the same Abraham God has now changed Abraham's name you see that here in Genesis 17 5 neither shall your name anymore be called Abram but your name shall be Abraham a father of many nations I have made you so God is telling Abra, Abram now I'm going to change your name to Abraham and you're going to be the father of many nations that's what God is telling Abraham. <laughs> and now Abraham now, you see, we, we now jump from Genesis down to Chronicles because what we're now not showing you Abraham. This lesson is 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 taken for what it is. And you have to understand why it's like it is. Now it's giving you uh, the uh, in uh, uh, verse uh, Nehemiah 17, uh, uh, 9, 7 is giving you who now Abraham's Torah 25 21 25 1 these uh, then again Abraham took his wife and her name was Keturah and you see the sons that she had these are the six sons that Keturah had after Sarah had died and now God changed Abraham's name yes up in 17 5 but you have to understand that God had already prior back if you go back into the lessons and because it's like a double so like I said, you go back into Genesis and you see where God met, had a meeting in the tent door with Abram. And God told Abram that he was going to have a child. Sarah was going to have a child this time next year. And that's when Sarah laughed. And that's what Isaac's name means, laughter. All names in the Bible have a meaning. I just tell you that now. All the names that you see have a meaning. And when God told Abram that Sarah was going to have a child she laughed in the tent they were in the tent door eating because when the Lord met with Abraham he was in three forms father son and Holy Spirit and Abraham kneeled down before the Lord and invited the Lord to with them to come father son and Holy Spirit to come and have a meal with him in in his tent so they sat in the tent door and Abraham sent out his servants to kill the fatted calf and they came in and they were actually eating beef hey 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 in his tent door when the Lord told him that he was going to have a child well he was on his way then the Lord was to go into Sodom and get Lot out of Sodom because Sodom was a part of the seven cities in the plain and the Gomorrah where God was going to destroy and he knew that that's a lesson for another day but now going down in Genesis 25 6 said unto your son of the concubine which Abraham now name is Abraham and Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son whether he had lived eastward of the eastward country so you see now Abraham is sent in 25 6 he sent Sarah and he sent each couture and her son away he sent her away Ishmael he sent her away now you see how the, how the lesson is, you see how Chronicles and Nehemiah give you information, then in Genesis 25, 1 give you information, and Genesis 25, 2, 3 give you information, down through 25, 6, 25, 8, 25, 9, you see all this is 25, 10, 11, 12, all this is 13, 14, 15, 16, all this is in the about Abraham, but it's in the book of Genesis chapter 25, that's what I'm trying to get you to see chapter 25 chapter 25 down to the 28 then it goes back again to show you 25 28 and Isaac and uh, that Isaac loved Esau you see how how repetitive 
the Bible is where it starts in one place and it goes another. It's like a double-edged sword. The Bible just it's like the wind is another example that Jesus Christ gave. You don't know which way it's going to come or which way it's going to blow. But you got to understand what is being said and that, that what we consider to be repetitive is God trying to demonstrate in our mind to comprehend what he's letting us see. I'm talking about God, the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit is the orchestrator of the ones who wrote the Bible so they can see what is being said. And the one word I want you to want you to look saying, God, I am the Lord Almighty. Walk before me and you and be you perfect. So if you walk with the Lord, you see that in the Lord's prayer that he's praying is that we can be perfect by walking with the Lord. If we walk with the Lord, we will be perfect because the Lord is perfect. And if we walk with him and did, and get rid of the things that's not of the Lord, which is sin itself, pride itself, then we will be perfect. That's what God is saying. Moving on with this because I'm really taking up too much time. Here's another lesson of the Edomites. The Edomites, and back up said, don't let them read and don't let them vote. Well, the Edomites got a rebellious heart. That's why God didn't want Rebecca to, he wanted Rebecca to change the Edomites what he had for the Edomites. He gave what he had for the Edomites to, to uh, uh, Jacob because Jacob's name was going to be changed and God was going to bring Jesus Christ down through Judah, which was one of Jacob's children. The fourth child of Israel was Judah. And God had to bring Jesus Christ down through Judah to take back what was taken way back up when God said, let us make man in our image. Well, it had to take place. So Jesus Christ had to come in order to save what God had for the world. And in the world, God's time is not our time. It's recorded in the Bible two places, that in Peter and also in the book of Psalms, that one day with the Lord is as of a thousand years. One day. And a thousand years is one day. That's what the lesson is saying. So one day with God is a thousand of your years. And you're not going to live a thousand years. But he know your heart. Your heart is where God lives. Because he breathed into the breath of life. Into the clay that he took man. He took Adam. He formed Adam from the clay of the earth. Dust of the earth. Which he had caused the mist to go up and fall over the clay. And this is in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 3. He, in chapter 2 and chapter 3. And he... he uh, he molded man from the dust of the ground and breathed into man the breath of life and man become a living soul. Well, your living soul is your heart and God knows the heart. He knew in Rebecca's womb that he knew the heart of Jacob and Esau when they were in Rebecca's womb. He knew that Esau was going to have the mentality that he has now that he has to be in control. But <laughs> and he really is. But he won't want to wait on his control. He want to take back what he think that was stolen from him when God had told Rebekah, his mother, that Jacob would be stronger than Esau and that Esau would serve Jacob. Je Esau didn't want to do that. Esau's heart is not to do that because he thinks that the blessing that Rebekah and Jacob stole from Isaac to give to Jacob the blessing that Isaac had, Esau wanted. But that wasn't a blessing that God wanted Esau to have. He had a blessing for Esau, but Esau won't wait on his blessing. And Jacob don't accept the blessing that God gave him. Why you know that? Because the people of Judites, they possess, they, they, they want articles and new cars and things like that. They don't want to go to the Lord because the Lord would turn his head from them. And that's what he did and allowed the Edomites who had been enslaved by the Judites. He allowed the Edomites to capture the Judites and bring them to a place that wouldn't let them read the Bible nor vote. <laughs> that's where we are today. But understanding if the Judites understood what they have, they have the blessing of God here because God has already told their mother, their great grandmother, Rebecca, that they were going to be stronger than their brother. And their brother was older one, that the older one will be weaker than the younger one. And this demonstration of that process has taken place over the years, thousands and thousands of years ago. Jesus Christ came down to 42,000 generations. And the process of what we're talking about here took place back up in the beginning of the second 14,000 generation. We're talking about Abraham. 
and Abraham it was a descendant down from Isaac's uh, people. He had three sons, Isaac, and Isaac was 500 years old when his three sons were born. But Abraham came down from their descendants. That's what we're talking about. And and Isaac was at the ending of the first 14,000 generation. And Abraham was at the beginning of the second 14,000 generation, if you can hear what I'm saying. But God has got his hand on everything because one day with him is a thousand years. He know exactly what's going on and what's going on because he, God, set all of this motion in motion, if you can hear what I'm saying. Moving on, look now at Genesis 35. Two. I just happened to go there. Oh, look at 35 1. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came with him 400 men and divided the children of Leah and Rachel and unto the two handmaids. So now we know that Jacob has now had all these women and married all these different women. Now Esau is still upset at Jacob. Look at 25 27 21, 27 41. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him and Esau had the heart in the days of mourning for his father are at hand then I will say to my brother Jacob see Esau still has this heart to kill Jacob to do some desperately to Jacob even today the Edomites don't want the Judites to vote Edomites don't want the Judites to have anything unless the Edomites say so but the Edomites don't understand that God is in control of Jacob's heart, <laughs> Judah, and also in control of the Edomites. God is in control of everything. But neither one of the twin understood God. That's what we're saying. Neither one of them. Because one want this and the other want that. I want what you have, Judah, Judah are saying to the Edomites. I want what you got. But the, Judah, the Edomites are saying to the Judahs, I want what you got. So the fight is still there, if you can hear what I'm saying. We're moving on with this now because we're taking up too much time. Moving on, and look. And the God appeared unto Jacob again, uh, 20, 35, 9, and appeared unto him again out of the, uh, and, and blessed him. Okay, and God said unto him, your name is Jacob. Your name, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall your name. And he called his name Israel. That's the night that God now, the night that happened when God, Jacob was now running from Esau, from Esau to kill him. And that's when God changed his name. And you see down in uh, 35, 14, and Jacob set up a pillar, P-I-L-L-A-R, because there's two different kind of pillars in the Bible. He set up the pillar, the P-I-L-L-A-R, in a place that he called, and that's what he named Rebecca. But you see that he used that rock to use it as a P-I-L-L-O-W, and he had a dream of the ladder he saw ascending and descending out of heaven. But I'm, that's why I'm emphasizing the word pillar versus the word pillar, P-I-L-L-O-W and P-I-L-L-A-R. When he had to lay his head up on the P-I-L-L-O-W, which was a rock, he had a dream, and he after he had the dream, he set up the P-I-L-L-A-R as a, as a monument to God, and he called that Becca, uh, Bethel, Bethel. And that's when he saw the uh, angels ascending and descending out of the heaven out of the door of heaven and he saw God in the door of heaven all that's in the, in the Genesis but you have to go through it and see it this is just a giving information about Jacob and Esau and Rebecca and Isaac <laughs> this Sunday school lesson is about Isaac and Rebecca Jacob and Esau that's what we're talking about in this lesson and Abram Abraham because God changed their name and Abraham is the father a grandfather of Jacob and Esau and Abraham was the father of Isaac and we had other children in Abraham. That's what this lesson was been all about. We're going to move on. Here's a picture of Judah and Esau and the secret of what, what we're saying. And this is uh, the Edomites. The Edomites are arguing over something that they really don't have any control of. They don't know or should not, under, may not want to know what took place in between the discussion between God and Rebecca when God was telling Rebecca of what was going to take place with the twin in her womb, the Edomites and the Judites that was in her womb. And the Edomites has not yet forgiven the Judites for what they got from Isaac, which the Edomites think that Isaac's blessing was greater than God's blessing. But God's blessing is yet to come to the Edomites, having not understanding Edomites nor Judites of what God has intent for them all. But God had to bring his Christ down through 
the Judites. He knew to bring his Christ through the Judites and not the the Edomites because he knew how many uh, children that Abraham was going to have. He knew the relationship between Abraham and and uh, Abraham's uh, young first uh, second son Isaac and Abraham's six sons. That's a relationship between Abraham's direct relationship between the two brothers. Isaac's brothers and also Ishmael's brothers were the six sons of Abraham and, and, and Keturah. Abraham's six sons that he had by Keturah are also intermingled with Jacob and Esau's people. <laughs> Even in the world today, we have Esau, Abraham's people wanting to bring war against other people of Abraham. We have people that's not a part of the war, but want to help defend the war, if you can hear what I'm saying, of Abraham's people, because all Abraham's people are there. But there's one thing I did not yet get to. I may not get there. But Isaac sent away. Isaac only blessed. I mean, no, no, Abraham. That's what I'm trying to say. Abraham only blessed Isaac. Abraham gave all he had in a blessing to Isaac. He gave Ishmael nothing and he gave his other six sons anything. Abraham gave it all to Isaac. Isaac received Abraham's blessing. I guess where? Well, look back where God knew what Isaac was there for. <laughs> Isaac, an old man, took a young girl and the young girl, after so many years, bearing, had a had twin in her stomach. And God told her what was going to happen into the world with her twin and that she and, and her, that she will be a, a mother of thousands of millions and that mother thousands of millions had already put into what's here now in the heart of the Junites and also into the heart of the Edomites and the Edomites are they what faint, they are this in a bag of potato chips when they really have a blessing that they don't even realize that they got they think that the blessing that their father grandfather gave to their father, Esau, that he did not give Esau was hurting them. It really didn't. It helped them, but they don't understand that. And the Judites who got the blessing didn't want it because they they don't look for it. They turn their head and go another direction. It is truly amazing how God shows us things that he wants us to see. We're moving on down through Judges. I want you to just stop this slide. And study this for yourself. Here is an example. Now, I can't go back, but it is the medium rights into the hand of the Israel. Uh, Israel. And uh, this is where there was a, the marriage. See, now this is they're fighting each other now. If in uh, uh, Judge 7-7, uh, seven, seven, they are actually fighting each other. But Gideon, and by the 300 men that left uh, like a dog, they left water. They didn't even drink water like they, they left the water like a dog drink laps water. Dog don't just drink water like a cow or like a horse out of the uh, well. They, the dog, dog laps water. And these men, <laughs> these men, these are descended from Abraham's and Keturah. These are their, they, these are uh, the, the four some children. They left water like a dog, as you see here. They didn't, they didn't drink like uh, regular people. But they, they are now fighting. They are now fighting the Judites and the Ishmaelites and the, and the uh, Edomites. We're moving on with this. Make sure you stop this information and study the Sunday school lesson. I'm just giving you information about it because I've been here almost for an hour and I'm going to move on if I can. Make sure you stop this slide. All you got to do is just click it. And you must share it. You, I'm not. A, I'm asking you to do it, but you saw in the uh, what Jesus Christ is asking us is a command. We're almost at the end of this, and yeah, we are. Uh, we're not quite. <laughs> Well, not quite, <laughs> but this is all about the, the medium, the Midianites and the Judites and what took place. And all this is in the, what was what we consider now the Middle East or in Africa. That's what it really is. But uh, there's no place that, uh, that we really, really, really can put our finger on called the Middle East. We just call it the Middle East for whatever reason we call it. But here, Genesis 25, see, come back to Genesis 25 again. And Jacob and Esau said, feed me. This is, well, we've already seen this because he was hungry. And this is where the process started. And then 25, uh, Genesis 36, 8 said, thus dwell Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. So Edom, 
Esau is the father of the Edomites. And the Edomites are here today. And so are the Judites. They're here today. And you notice the Edomites are telling the Judites, you won't, we won't be replaced by you. <laughs> we won't be replaced by you. But wait a minute. You came and took us away from where we were to bring them where you didn't have no place of being either. You came and took your place. And now you're saying that you don't want us to replace you. We have no need to replace you. We are greater than you. We were greater than you when you started. It's just five of you, but there are 12 of us. You see, we are greater than you. I know God has told our great, great grandmother that we will be greater than you. And we are. And we, you can't change what God has already set. It's there. You can't stop me from voting because I have the godly right to do that. It's just like the breath that we're breathing. I have a right to breathe. God gave me that right to breathe. He gave me the, you the same right to breathe. I can't take your right to breathe by, by righteousness or God's law. And you can't take mine. It's a right that we both have. I can't take yours and you can't take mine. And you trying to take mine. And that's not right. God's not going to accept that. Because he doesn't want you to do that. You're trying to, vengeance is his. Vengeance belonged to the Lord. He knew when he was talking to your great grandmother, Rebecca, that vengeance was his. He knew what kind of blessing he had of, or has for you, but you don't want to wait for your blessing. He said in uh, James 14, 1, 4, uh, 4, 14, verse uh, 1, 4, 1, 4, but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing, Esau. But let patience have a perfect work, Esau, that you may be perfect, Esau, and wanting for nothing. But you got to have patience. That's what I was telling Rebecca about when she was carrying you in her womb. And he's talking to Aaron here. Now, this is a story goes on. I'm not going to stop and read all of this for, for you. But this is about the story of the Edomites and the Judites, Jacob and Esau. <laughs> all we've been talking about in this whole lesson, Abraham and his seed. We're not talking about a whole lot of details about the eight sons that Abraham had or the first son, Ishmael. But we are talking about the two primary sons or the two twins of, of Isaac, which is Jacob and Esau. Well, moving on. Here again, these people call themselves what they call themselves. And they, they name themselves. We named ourselves. And this is what they are going. We used to sing this song, God Bless America. I don't believe that this is being blessed by God. It may be a thought that one has, but in my opinion, that God is not blessing that. Okay, we're moving on through this process. Stop this information and share it with as many people as possible so you can see. Second Chronicles 28, 17 said, For again the Edomites had come and smitten the Judah and carried away captives. That's what we are today. Carried away captives. Won't let them read the Bible to know what's who they are. Hang them if they caught reading the Bible. And then down through the years, don't let them vote. We have we stopped them from voting a long time ago. We gave them a right to vote. And they kept on producing more than us. And now they are changing what we don't want them to have to vote on what we don't want them to have. So we don't want them to vote. We don't want them to breathe the air that God has given them to breathe. We want to give them what we want them to have. And if they don't get what we want them to have, we don't think they should have it. And that is amazing. But this whole story, looking at 2 Chronicles 21.10, says that the Edomites revolted, revolted from the chariots. No, the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah until when? This day. The Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah until this day unto this day but the judah did capture the edomites and then the edomites look down in verse um uh, what we just read down in 27 28 to 17 the edomites then in turn smitten the judites and carried away captives until this day <laughs> oh my lord until this day we're here and look down again uh, uh, psalms 83 is talking about the ishmaelites and the moabites and the Moab and the Amorites and the Philistines. All this is all this is Abraham, Abraham's people. That's what we're trying to get you to hear. All this is a part of Abraham's people. We're not all this lesson is about Abraham's people. 
the Ishmaelites, we did not get in detail about the 12 sons of, of Ishmael, and all the 12 sons of Jacob, we didn't talk about but just one, that's Judah, <laughs> we didn't talk about all of them, and we didn't talk about all the five sons of, of, uh, Is, of I, Esau, but they are there, and all the uh, six sons of uh, Keturah, but they are there, so it's a whole lot in this lesson, but the Edomites are here, these are Edomites that we're seeing here, and the Edomites are revolting on January 6, 2021. They revolted against God who blessed America. And God blessed America. And we all believe that in this democracy, that God blesses America. They're saying, no, we don't want you to vote. We don't want you to have this. We don't want you to have that. Because we are the Edomites. And the Edomites don't have that. Look at what Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel is a very, very interesting book. In the Bible, but a little before we look at Lamentations 421. That's where I want to go. Rejoice and be glad, O daughters of Edom, that dwell in the land of us. <laughs> you see where they land? Now, where was Job from? Look at the first chapter of the book of Job, and you see the land where Job is from. It's the same place that the Edomites is here. So was Job an Edomite? Because it was the e rejoice and be glad, O daughters of Edom that dwell in the land, uh, you see? So if Job, who was, was well, well, didn't say, but we just have to look at what it's saying here in the book of Lamentation, that Job was from this place. And when we're talking about the daughters of Edom and Esau was the father of the Edomites, we're moving on. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said, because that Edom, we're looking again at Ezekiel 25, 12. The Lord said, because that Edom has dwelt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance. Hear that word? <laughs> and and greatly offended and, re, and revenging himself unto them. So you see, God saved vengeance is mine. So again, God is making reference of the Edom doing something against Judah because God had already told both their grandmothers, <laughs> Rebecca, he told them that you got the Bible, Edomites. You wouldn't let the Judah read the Bible, but you got the Bible. You know what I told your grandmother, that Judah would be over you and you would have to serve Judah. And now you want to reverse this. That's what Ezekiel is saying. Very interesting book. But it's talk about down in the pit. It's something that you need to hear. But God is telling the Edomites, Ezekiel 32, 29 said, there is Edom her king and all her, her princes, which with their might are uh, laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. The pit is hell. That's where the sons of God are now chained under darkness until the great judgment. See that in the Bible also in the book of uh, uh, Jude, and then also in the book of Second Peter, unto darkness, <laughs> down in the pit. So he's talking about the Edomites. You Edomites, you got to understand what God is saying. I'm in control. I'm in control. I knew when you were in the womb what was going to happen. I knew that your brother was would be blessed by your his your your fathers, your father Isaac. I knew that. I knew what kind of heart you would have when you come out. I know your heart. I put it there. That's what God is saying. And if you keep doing what you're doing, I have a place reserved for you down in the pit. Understand the whole process. Look down in Amos. And I'm starting in Amos. I want you to see this. I highlighted that. Thus said the Lord. All this is the Lord talking. Thus said the Lord. Amos 1.9. Thus said the Lord. Amos 1.11. Thus said the Lord. Amos 2.1. Thus said the Lord. All this is... What God is saying, and look at oh, 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 Obadiah, look what he's saying in, in the vision, in his vision. All this is about, we're going to show that in a minute, but this is again the Edomites and what the Edomites are doing, what they call themselves the Edomites. Don't call themselves the Edomites, they call themselves GOPs. Okay, but look what, uh, we, we're concluding this now, what what uh, he's saying, Obadiah is saying. Thus said the Lord. That's why I want to point out that thus said the Lord. All this is God is talking. And I put the God in green for a reason because that's how, how he's described in the book of, of uh, Daniel, uh, his word being. 
But now he's he's God is letting you and I know what he's saying. God said concerning Edom, we have heard the rumors from the Lord and unto the ambassadors he sent among the heathens arise you and let us rise up against the into battle. Shall I not in this day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? I'm just trying to let you see what God is saying. Thus said the Lord, you, you cannot stop one from doing what God has set them to do. You can't stop them from reading the Bible and you can't stop them from voting. These are the Edomites that you see here. Uh, that's where they are. We can't change what God has already showed us. And they, this is the seed of Abraham. Now we are in the conclusion again, going back to show you about the, what took place in 1995. This is what took place. There were no police officers, no arrest of the two brothers' children getting together. We're talking about Ishmaelites and the Judites primarily, but there were other people of other children of Abraham there, but the primary leader of this organization or leaders of this organization were the Ishmaelites and the Judites. And there were nothing that took place among them. And this is what God is saying now. The two nations were there. Two nations, but the two nations that God was talking about are not among these nations. These are the Judites, the Ishmaelites, and the Judites that are here among the millions of people that you see and there were no march, there were no destruction, no one got killed, there were no arrest. It's just difference between yesterday and today. This took place 27 years ago, this day, but definitely 26 years ago, yesterday, we we'll are talking about June the 6th of 2021. Uh, this is the March 1995 that took place among these men. All right, so now we're concluding this. Once again, we're going to show and recite the Lord's Prayer to conclude this and to understand what he's telling us here among these, these people. Go, you therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. That's what Jesus Christ is telling us to do, to stand together as one, not to fight each other and to stop one from doing something that God has given us the right to do. We have that right to do this. God has given us and one does not have the right to take another man's right away. And the right to live is the right to live. And I don't have the right to take your right to live. You don't have the right to take my right to live. God gave us the life that we have. And he's the only one can should have the right to take it away. I'm in concluding this and reciting the Lord's Prayer. As we conclude it, and then we're going to close it out. Father, looking up into his father's face, he lifted up his eyes into heaven and said, Father, that I was come to glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. And you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, of whom he have sent. So I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work with what you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory of which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. Now they have done that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all yours are mine, and all mine are thine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept, and none of them are lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come out to you in these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, 
but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And sanctify them through your truth, and your word is truth. If you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may be sanctified through the truth. And neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through that word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and to have loved them as you have loved me. And, Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, of which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you did send me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith in me may be in them, and I in them. And that, that is the, this presentation, this Sunday school lesson for today's class. I want you to know that I pray that you understand everything that I've given you. Make sure that you go back and study it and do as Jesus Christ commanded us to do is to share it with as many as you can possibly share it with. It's a command that he gave us to do, and I'm sharing it with you, and I pray that you share it with others. You see on one at the bottom of the URLs at the bottom, I gave one said come to BibleClass.com. That was the first URL, and this URL here is Jesus Christ Video Prayer. Well, Jesus Christ Video Prayer is this prayer. But it's broken down into sections to show you how and why it's so important for you and I to understand and to share the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed for us. He prayed for us before he died. And God answers your prayer. But the first prayer that God answered concerning you and I was a prayer that Jesus Christ prayed for you and I. He prayed that you and I may have the eternal life that he came to give us so that when we leave this place we call body, we can rest with Jesus Christ in his kingdom and not down into the pit with those that God was talking about in the book of Ezekiel that will go down into the pit. We don't have to go into the pit. All we have to do is accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and do and carry out the commandments that he's given us to do and carry out. And then our life will be in paradise in his kingdom with him. And many as we can carry, we need to do that, understanding what we have said in this lesson. I thank you. I love you. And I pray in Jesus name. Blessings upon you. Have a good day. Bye bye.